Affinity Photo is a really powerful raw editor, but if you are a beginner, you may be overwhelmed by the complex interface and the vast array of tools it has. So in this video, I want to focus on Affinity Photo's photo retouching tool set, which is primarily the developed persona. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to help me make more videos. As mentioned, the developed persona is the workspace for performing raw editing. The first question you may ask is, how do you get to the developed persona? There are two ways to do this. The first way is the simplest, just open the raw file. It will take you to the developed persona automatically. You can see that the corresponding icon is highlighted. The second way is the manual way. To demonstrate this, I'll just open a JPEG. As you can see, you'll be taken to the photo persona instead of the developed persona. So to go to the developed persona from the photo persona, you have to make sure that a pixel layer is selected, then click the developed persona icon and you'll be moved to the developed persona. So now that we know how to get to the developed persona, let me demonstrate the most useful features of the developed persona. So there are actually six I wanna talk about. The first one is called the basic panel. The basic panel is where you do Lightroom style adjustments like changing the shadows, highlights, saturation and vibrance. And it works the same way as Lightroom or any other raw editor. One quirk about Affinity Photo is if you want to save your edited photo, you have to click the develop button and go back to the photo persona and from there you can save your image. Seems like an unnecessary step, but that's how it works in Affinity. The second useful feature is the split view mode. Comparing original and the edited image is really a common task when you do photo editing. I believe the develop persona has the easiest way to do this in Affinity. So simply tap the split view button to display both the processed and original raw image on the same page. A sliding divider can be repositioned to view the before and after processing. Number three useful feature is the remove blemishes feature. The remove blemishes feature is used to remove both unsightly objects and blemishes. And it's really the easiest way to do this in Affinity. It works just like the clone and stamp tool in Photoshop. So to demonstrate this, let's take this image and remove some unwanted objects in the grass. To remove an object, first select the blemish removal tool, then use the brackets in your keyboard to adjust the brush size. Next, click the area to remove. Then finally, drag to the area to replace the object with. Number four is the details panel. The details panel is the place you go to for sharpening an image and or removing noise. I'll demonstrate removing noise. So let's work with this noisy image. To remove noise, click the noise reduction checkbox, then drag the luminance slider to remove the ugly grain. It's pretty simple to use and as you can see, very effective. Affinity has also color noise reduction, which works really well. Number five is the lens panel. The lens panel provides adjustments which can be used to correct ugly lens distortions. Affinity has a database of lenses which can be used to automatically correct for lens imperfections. In this example, though, I'm going to use the lens panel to correct the ugly vertical distortion and vignetting. First, I'll use the distortion slider to correct the barrel distortion. Then I'll use the vertical slider to turn the image upright. Next, I'll use the rotation slider to straighten the image. And finally, I'll use the scale slider to remove the vignetting. As you can see, the image is now much better. The number six is the overlay panel. This panel is used to do localized tone adjustments. In this image, I want to brighten just the bottom portion of the image, which is extremely underexposed. So to select that area, go to the overlay panel, click new brush overlay, and brush over the area you want to adjust. Next, go to the basic panel to make any adjustments you require. And as you can see, it will affect only the overlaid portion of the image. 
It's really useful because you can add more than one overlay. You can also erase from the overlay with the tools on the left toolbar. I'll be coming up with a video to explain how to use the overlay panel in more detail and I'll leave a link in the description. So there you have it, six useful features of the develop persona. I think you can agree this is a really powerful persona and the one to use for photo retouching tasks. So I hope you found this video helpful. To support this channel, make sure to subscribe and to like to keep the videos coming. And till the next time, bye.